Hi everyone, welcome to my take. Today I thought I'd show you how I wrote my thesis abstract. Uh, this one I wrote for my PhD, but you'll find that there's a similar structure to writing any science abstract. Perhaps you're a master's or PhD student, um, or you know any scientist at any stage in your career and you're looking to write an abstract and you're searching for some guidelines, then I hope this video will help you with that. Um, this example here before you is actually my real PhD thesis abstract. It was checked by my supervisors, uh, I had two supervisors, they checked through it and also my examiners did too, so I feel that this is a peer-reviewed abstract that I can share with you and also giving you my own example. It's going to be easier for me to tell you how I did it because this is how I was taught to do it. So although it's not the perfect abstract by any means, um, I feel that it is an example that I can work through with you uh, to show you and to guide you. My thesis is actually now available online too. Um, and today you can see my name for those of you who don't know me who are watching this video. My name is Sundar Chohan. So because this abstract was for my PhD thesis, it's a bit longer than an abstract that you would find in a journal. Um, it's 411 words. I find that even a thesis abstract that isn't structured, i.e. doesn't have titles such as introduction, methods, results, um, and conclusions will normally be structured in that way anyway, um, even though a thesis abstract is kind of considered to be unstructured because it doesn't have those headings, actually it is quite structured. So the abstract is supposed to be a summary of your work. Um, it should give the reader an overview of what, your, what the contents of your detailed thesis or dissertation or um, article contains without the reader having to go into your thesis to understand this summary. So the summary should stand alone. So the University of Manchester, which is where I did my PhD, um, asked me to set up my abstract the way it is here. So if you are submitting a thesis or a master's dissertation, then please do check your university guidelines to ensure that you're presenting your abstract correctly. My abstract had to be written in a font size of 12 and um, with only single line spacing rather than the one and a half line spacing that I used in the rest of my thesis. I also had to um, write down my degree program and other such details in the abstract as well, um, even though I'd already put them at the front or in the preceding pages of my thesis. So it really should stand alone and I also had to give a loose copy to my examiners with my thesis so that they could read it completely separate to my thesis. So it just goes to show that the abstract really does have to be uh, self-explanatory. You shouldn't have to refer to the thesis. You have to make sure that any abbreviations that you use in your abstract are um, defined. So for example, I've written HDF, CTF, MAN5, but I've written what they are in the brackets. So this is my take on writing a thesis or scientific abstract um, and I will dissect each section to give you an idea of um, how it's been structured. So you will notice that I haven't used any subheadings uh, for my abstract either. I've not written introduction, methods and materials. Uh, you'll find that some journal abstracts do have those subheadings um, and actually the abstract, even though it doesn't have those subheadings, invisibly they are there. Um, because you do have to structure the abstract according to the background, the, the methods, the materials, the results of discussion. Um, you will see that the first third of my abstract is actually the background information. So in the first two sentences, you can see I've given the significance of this research. Here it happens to be clinical significance. In the next two sentences, I actually mention what knowledge is missing in relation to the problem. The problem was that tendons are able to undergo repeated cyclic loading in vivo without permanent deformation or mechanical failure. However, diseased, traumatized, and decellularized tendons gradually lose the ability to resist load and fail because of creep deformation. So that was a problem. And the knowledge that's missing is the molecular basis of the mechanical properties of tendon and how cells establish and maintain these properties is poorly understood. New knowledge in this area is required to develop novel medical strategies to improve tendon repair and regeneration. So you'll see that the abstract does flow. Um, you know, it's one sentence leads to the next. The next sentence moves on to describe a solution for the problem. So in this thesis, it's that recent advances in tissue bioengineering have led to the formation of fibrin-based tendon-like tissue tendon constructs that display the mechanical properties and ultrastructure of embryonic tendon. So in my thesis, I investigate the mechanical properties and ultrastructure of the fibrin-based tendon-like tissues, which is why I mention it here as a solution. 
so that it puts my research into perspective. After outlining the rationale for my study, I then go on to specifically mention what this thesis is presenting. So I go on to say this thesis presents a characterization of the tendon constructs derived from primary fibroblasts to understand the relationship between the cells and matrix during tissue development and to establish the standard of in vitro engineered tendons. As I had two results chapters, I had further objectives to achieve, which led me on to this sentence, which is, these findings facilitated protocol development to engineer human tendon-like tissue derived from stem cells. Novel findings of constructs formed from differentiated human pluripotent stem cells in feeder and feeder-free systems are presented. So you can see a third of my abstract there is basically me outlining the rationale for the study, the background, the introduction, um, before I get into specifically what I did and how I did it and what the results were and what my conclusions were. In your methods section, you will probably have several sections um, of various methods that you used. However, you only need to outline the ones here that directly led to your results and your conclusions. In my thesis, I had described several methods. However, I've just given a short summary here, as you can see, in one, two, in three sentences. So I'll read this out so you can see how I've written it here. Fibrin gels were seeded with human dermal fibroblasts, chick tendon fibroblasts, MAN5 cells, human embryonic stem cells, and induced pluripotent stem cells. Now, the key component of my study was the stem cell types that are used. Um, all the various cell types were compared with one another to reach the conclusions that I reached. Therefore, it was important for me to mention um, how these cells were used in my study. The second sentence in my method section describes that the gels were cultured until isometric tendon-like constructs were formed, and this was defined as T0, as I've denoted in brackets, or continued for four or 10 days post-formation. The mechanical properties, histology, and gene expression of the constructs were analyzed and compared between the constructs seeded with the aforementioned cell types. So I very briefly explained the key methods that I used in my thesis that enabled me to produce the results that I obtained. So that's my method section out of the way. I've highlighted all the sections of the abstract that we dissected so far. So now we're moving on to the results section. It can be tough summarizing long sections of your results chapters into just a few sentences in your abstract. But actually by doing this, even early on before you finish your thesis, can help you to clarify your thoughts and to see the overall picture of your thesis and it can help you to structure your thesis too so even if you decide to write your abstract at the beginning um, by the time you finished your your period in the lab or your experimental work etc you will have all the results in front of you after you've completed the analysis and then you can see how you will then present and structure your thesis um, according to the overall messages that you want to send to your readers. So actually writing an abstract in the early stages of writing a thesis can be very helpful. Of course, if you already have a clear idea of your thesis outline, then you can leave your abstract right into the end. Um, and of course, it will be much easier to write the final draft of your thesis abstract after writing your thesis. But no matter what it is, whether it's your thesis, a dissertation or an article, you will find that you can keep editing until you make that final draft. It's OK to, you know, not write the perfect sentence at first. Initially, the results section of my abstract was actually a bit shorter, but then my examiners asked me to um, put in one or two more results for my thesis. So I did do that. I added an extra sentence. Um, and as you can see, I've got five sentences of results here. Um, of course, this varies according to your thesis, but my take on it is as long as you've given the key findings, then that's all that matters. So I'll read out my results section to you. A nonlinear relationship exists between the initial and final cell number and between the initial cell number and mechanical properties. However, the results show that the cell number impacted cell matrix stabilization as strength per se was strongly dependent on initial cell number. Um, at this stage, I'd like to say that I did actually have a lot of numbers and things, and you'll notice that I haven't um, included them in my abstract uh, because I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I wanted to make it um, you know, easy to understand and easy to read. 
um, not too taxing. So that's why I've kind of written it in this way. Um, I have seen abstracts with more detail, with statistics and things like that. Um, and I think that would be okay as well, depending on your subject, depending on your research. Uh, but I just had so many that if I started um, writing, you know, if I started writing, then I would have far too many sentences for my abstract. So I'll continue on. Collagen-based constructs showed a significantly lower stiffness compared with fibrin-based constructs at T0 and T10. The stem cells and primary cells reproducibly underwent morphogenesis to form a 3D tissue similar to embryonic tendon in vivo, expressing ECM markers such as collagens type 1 and 3. The tissue also exhibited the ultrastructural characteristics and biomechanical profile of immature tendons. RNA-seq and qPCR results demonstrated the upregulation of tendon-specific genes. So in a nutshell, this is what my thesis shows. This is what's novel about my work. This is my original contribution. So I'll highlight this bit as well. And the last bit is my concluding sentence, which is tendon-like tissue generated from human stem cells and HDFs in vitro has the potential to replace functional tissue lost through disease and to advance the understanding of the molecular basis of human tenogenesis. Now, actually, in my thesis, I have a conclusion chapter, which is around three and a half pages long. So it is tough. It can be quite tough writing your abstract because you have to summarize three and a half pages into one sentence, for example. Um, and that can be hard. However, it also does help everyone. It helps you and it helps the examiners too. I mean, if you had to explain your thesis um, and summarize in your viva or in an oral exam, then you will find that reading through your abstract will prepare you best for that. Um, so you can, you know, summarize in a nutshell within a minute or so of what your research is about from beginning to end. So in summary of my summary, these were the seven sections of my abstract. I started with the significance or problem. Then I moved on to saying what the missing knowledge was. Then my proposed solution to the problem. Then my aims to achieve the proposed solution my methods for the key results, my key findings, and my conclusion. You will note that I haven't included any references in my abstract. You are not supposed to include references. Uh, one point I'd also like to make is that depending on your university guidelines, you may find that you don't actually have to focus on um, sticking to a specific word count. What's important is that you focus on the content and you include all the key points that you need to make in your abstract. Um, of course, you may have some guidelines. So, for example, my university asked me to keep to a one-page limit, um, and that's what I've done here. So, the principles that I mentioned in this video of writing the abstract are the same in undergraduate to postgraduate level writing of the abstract. So, I hope this video has helped you. If it has, please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. See you soon. Bye!